Mandy and I first met, it was 15 years ago, in Winona State, a new drawing class. I remember walking into the room and seeing this cute kid over there, hippie looking guy, <laughs> shoulder length hair. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, okay, he seems pretty cool. So I went and just sat over next to him. And it was a drawing one class, um, you know, the whole freshman year thing. And I didn't really know anyone at Winona State. It was um, a college that I chose, it was just the furthest away from home that I could afford. And uh, that was a campus I just was getting used to. And I fell in love with the bluffs and the sur surrounding beauty and scenery and everything. And, um, I took a lot of art classes as my relaxing fluff classes, if you will. Um, had a, I was going for a biology major. And um, when I first met Andy, there he was. So I really enjoyed that class. Um, that's actually how we met and then we started dating. It was really cute, two nerds in love, yeah. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Andy. I paint things. Um, I guess I started doing art as a kid, um, drawing. I read a lot of science animal books, love dinosaurs, just drew tons of dinosaurs, animals, uh, read lots of Calvin and Hobbes. Um, you know, I draw comics um, and continue drawing things until you know, college, uh, started taking art classes. Wanted to get into painting classes. Um, never really could make it in, you know, people would always get in before me, so I just decided to start off on my own. You know, just kind of in my uh, dorm room, just start painting. a lot of by nature by things that I like you know I don't I do a lot of paintings for friends as gifts otherwise they um, just kind of sit around the house and so I figure I'd paint things I'd like to look at you know a lot of uh, TV shows um, other think pieces inspired by artists I like um, whether it's musicians or other painters or um, what have you. Um, started off working on uh, focusing on my perspective, you know, and anatomy, kind of moving on, um, exploring what different colors do. And now I'm kind of um, progressing on into surreal, you know, and, and different things, not from, from photographs or from um, you know, things that I can see, just, um, you know, seeing what that, where that goes and trying different techniques um, with painting. So it's always something new to explore and to try and expand, you know, on what you do. I've always loved working with a wide variety of items and things that mediums involve touch. Um, one of the first stained glass uh, projects that I ever made was back in high school, and I also loved working with soapstone and wood carvings a lot, thanks to my wonderful father, who was a huge influence on a lot of the artwork that I made. Um, basically, my family, we eat, sleep, slept, and breathed art. Uh, my dad worked on, at school sometimes as a substitute teacher for art classes and he also taught me how to throw on the wheel and would work with clay and that kind of thing. So that's kind of how I got a lot of my 3D background and my sister Jara was a huge influence, uh, two-dimensional especially. She, my sister Jara is an amazing painter and um, she's very big on color and that's kind of where a lot of that came from. Um, when I went off to college, uh, I got more in depth with painting and study and the history of art, but for me it just always went back to touch. I had started working on spinning on my spinning wheel that Andy had got for me, 
and I just really enjoyed touching the wool roving. My friend came out in Stuartville, she had some sheep, so I'd help her shear her sheep and uh, get the wool roving that way, and a lot of it I initially dyed myself, and it was wool that I was with from start to finish, and I, I had, um, when my oldest daughter was born, I would gotten more into needle felting because spinning on my spinning wheel was a little too dangerous. I know that sounds kind of backwards, going on a wheel and then going to needles because it's safer. Yeah, <laughs> but um, the, the idea behind it, I like it because it goes back to my science roots um, of knowing how it works. The felting needle slotted on the sides and those little ridges that you feel when you go up, they go in and out of the wool that causes heat and friction. And that heat and friction is what causes the protein fibers in wool to bind on itself. So you can essentially wool sculpt, and it's just been amazing. I can make stuff be as realistic or as cartoonish as I'd like, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. It's just such a versatile fiber and medium for me that I've never gotten bored with it like I have with other stuff. What you're about to see is a thrilling, dramatic real-life story. It is presented as a public service. The local experiment sets the pace, the color, <laughs> in design, and in quality. Take a good close look. Isn't that a beauty? She loves the delicate styling. Hey guys. Guess what? We have an art show coming up soon. May 8th, 7 to 10 at C4 Creative Salon. You should come check it out. Why should I check it out, Andy? There's going to be music by Oliver Books and Jason McKenzie there, um, local, musicians, yeah, local musicians. And there's going to be artwork from us. We're going to have a photographer. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of really amazing new artwork that we'll be working on. And also we're going to be showing some really cool old random artworks that we've had over 15 years now. Kind of found it by accident, so just come check it out. Uh, many thanks to those who have pre-bought tickets already. We have sold out of the swag bags, but if you're interested, we will have a table with a few goodies for sale in addition to the amazing artwork there. Um, and then we'll have some amazing food and catering by Canadian Honker with a cash bar. Check out this promo and we'll see you there. Fix the sunshine. Well, 